Hello there. Thank you for joining me for Courageous Survivors. Today I'm interviewing Jamika Barrett and her mother, Marie Barrett. Thank you for joining us. Welcome to Living True and Truly Living, where real people tell real stories about real issues. With your host, Tahira Monique Brown. Well, we're back with our episode, Special Needs from Birth to Death, and we have two amazing women that have joined us. They are my heroes, sheroes, as you may call it, uh, Jamika Barrett is a survivor. She had cancer, and I'll let her talk more about that. And Jamika's mom has joined us, Marie Barrett, uh, who is, wow, how can I express this? For a mother who has had a daughter with cancer and a daughter who has had kidney failure, did she have to have both kidneys replaced? Yes. Yes. I would like for you to talk to us about that, how you have endured. And I watched you do this without complaining with being the most amazing adventurer in caring for your daughters, how you had to run around Birmingham, Alabama from the hospital and doing the things that you had to do for your, for your daughter. And then for Jamika in Atlanta when she was in Grady Hospital with cancer, and I used to sing to you, used to call you. Um, she's my heart daughter, so they're, they're you mom, the heart daughters to me. Uh, but we're gonna talk to you about that. Uh, first, we're gonna let Jamika though talk about your cancer journey. And how old were you when you had cancer? I was diagnosed at the age of 26, um, and it's multiple myeloma. And the uniqueness of, in the beginning of the story is that it's mostly diagnosed with people 55 and older. Mm -hmm. Wow. So um, at the time of my diagnosis, I was the youngest patient in Georgia, so they had never treated anyone um, my age. So it was kind of a, a journey of figuring out what to do, mm -hmm. because there were no benchmarks for me um, being as young as I was. And I've seen photos of your journey. No one will believe it. That you're sitting here today. You had amazing doctors. Yes. <laughs> you had amazing doctors that care mm -hmm. for you, that love you, and you're also on the journey as an advocate yes, for, for cancer mm -hmm. survivors. Yes. Uh, on this journey, you, you've endured a lot of sickness. You call me when I, you know, when you're broken bones and mm -hmm. all that. You still go through that. And, you still want to work, mm -hmm. you're still an adventurer, <laughs> yes. still a survivor and a striver uh, in spite of your cancer diagnosis and the journey that you've been on. And we've come a long ways together. Yes. Oh, oh my yes. God, <laughs> talking to you when you were so near, mm -hmm. knocking on that door. Yes. Oh yes. And your voice sounded like a little cat. <laughs> <laughs> yes, a whisper for sure. It was the strength. Mm -hmm. um, when I first started out, um, it was just like a sickness. You know, you just don't feel well. Mm -hmm. And it progressed for a month. And I remember mm -hmm. it was Thanksgiving Day. And all of my milestones seemed to be connected with a holiday mm -hmm. <laughs> within mm -hmm. my story. Mm -hmm. but Certainly. It was Thanksgiving Day and our families usually always get together for the holidays and my mom came over and you know she just looked and said you know what something isn't right and at this time about three weeks I had been going back and forth to the emergency room you know saying don't feel well okay it's a virus here's some medication medication are staying down and it came to the point where I couldn't even keep down a glass of water so it was really a double-edged sword because it's like okay you're giving me the medicines but mm -hmm. I can't Take them in the medicine. Mm -hmm. So um, she said, call Grady. And we always promote that because a lot of people Grady in the Atlanta Hospital. area. Yes. <laughs> Thank God. I was in Grady. I know I know the care that they give you. Mm -hmm. Grady Hospital. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So we called their nurse line and when she described the symptoms that I had, they said it sound like um, she's going through renal failure. Her kidneys are shutting down, so you need to get her back to the emergency room as soon as possible. So Thanksgiving Day is, is where oh, I spent wow. my time. This was in the emergency room. And uh, thank goodness, this hospital that had been pushing me away mm -hmm. all this time, um, they had to then admit me because sure enough, my kidneys had started failing. 
Oh. Um, so I spent probably about three weeks to a month there when they finally was able to get my kidneys functioning again. And once again, with they that sent me home. situation, did you mm -hmm. think, Mom, that she was going through the same thing that your other daughter was going through with failure? That's exactly what we said. Mm -hmm. Because I Cause how can I have two children with the same <laughs> yes. situation? I got a call in the middle of a dinner party. We had gone over to friend's house for dinner that particular time. And I said, not again. And how old was your other daughter? What's her name? I keep forgetting her first name. Her name is Tangela Tangela. Robinson. I keep getting the name wrong because <laughs> I just call her heart daughter. <laughs> I don't call her Tangela nothing. I call her heart daughter. I call this one heart daughter. She says heart mom. Um, so She was 31 mm -hmm. at the time of her diagnosis. And that was 2001 in January when she started kidney mm -hmm. dialysis. Wow. And she's the mother of my two grandchildren. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She had uh, eclampsia uh -huh. in her second pregnancy, mm -hmm. and her kidneys shrank and no longer could function. Wow. Now she's a woo. Yeah. She's a mess, isn't she? <laughs> mm -hmm. Now she has a lot of energy, and even when she was going through that, uh, having to go and go to get her be on the machines and all that and mm -hmm. having to wear the side pack that she had to wear and all that. No, and she never had, she had to. to put, she, had to, <clears throat> she had it under her skin. She had a fissula. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. and, and then on she the, ended up with a bovine graft. Yeah, okay. Which is a cow's vein. Yeah. Because the artificial You know, I just saw this and that. Yeah, and that. I don't know what to call it. It would clog up, but mm -hmm. this stays open. Mm -hmm. um, the interesting thing is we had gotten her settled. We were used to her routine of going in mm -hmm. three times a week for dialysis. Mm -hmm. When Jamika got sick, when she went to the hospital, she went on the precancer floor. She was on one floor, and when she went up to the other floor, I had gone over to Marietta, where the other daughter lived, mm -hmm. when I got a call from Jamika, and she says, Mommy, they have a diagnosis, and it's cancer. Mm. And I'm freaking out on that at the end, but I have to stay strong. Mm -hmm. and I, because if she can say this with a straight voice, yeah. I have no choice but to find some strength. So, of course, my strength and my help is the Lord. Yes, yes, and yes. And so um, she was okay. So I said, we're going to make it through this. We're going to be okay. But as the time went on. Um, you didn't expect such a long no, journey, did no. you? No, she went in December 17th of 2003. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she did not exit that hospital until sometime in February when she left wow. grade. Mm -hmm. yeah. And wow. she made uh, Christmas gifts for the people while she was there. <laughs> she made the pins with flowers on the mm -hmm. end. Mm -hmm. So whoever, when I came from work at the end of the day, I would see people with flowers. Mm -hmm. I knew they had taken care of <laughs> Miss Jamie. Make up <laughs> <laughs> She also, this condition also led to your divorce. Yes. Oh, yes, yes. And yeah. he was also a musician. He w Well, yes, he was, <laughs> in theory. Yeah, in theory. Yes. But he was trying. He was trying. He was out there trying. Um, yes. Mm -hmm. that's, that must be really hard, though, you know, because your children. Well, for me at that time, as you mentioned, um, it was a couple of factors. One, the fact that during this time I knew something was wrong and no one was telling me what was mm -hmm. wrong or helping me to feel better. So by the time that I ended up at Grady, um, and it was so quickly, like I went, at the time when I was married, um, he went out of town and I had just got discharged and I made it about three days before I was back in the same condition. Yeah. And um, that's when I said, okay, we have to get you over to Grady. And one of the things we didn't mention too, that's something a part of my advocacy is, I believe all of it was wrapped in the fact that I was uninsured. So mm -hmm. I think that played mm -hmm. a major factor with the treatment at the first hospital. Which so took longer and longer for you to get a diagnosis. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. I feel like um, they did everything up until the point to be able to get me there because they would have then had to treat me and then worry about and they the can't financial release you. side. They have to keep you. Exactly, exactly. So when my mom said, "Okay, we have to get you to Grady," you know. It just has to happen. So that was more um, than I think just, I was just a dying. decision. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Grady exactly. Hospital has done so much amazing mm -hmm. work. Burned with the major burn clinic. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Also with cancer, yes. they're number one. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and so with cancer treatment, and they've mm -hmm. quit to diagnose it. Exactly. As well. It took mm -hmm. them one scan where all these wow. tests had been done at that previous hospital. They did one scan once they looked at everything that they had done. So. I mean, it was such a blessing, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it was nothing. I, I, as a matter of fact, I tell people all the time, they have the new um, uh, material out now where it says, Grady saved my life, and that is definitely true. 
for me. I am definitely a person who, if I had not gone to Grady, I, I wouldn't be here today, and I truly believe that. Um, but yeah, I made it three days, and my father came to pick me up to take me to an appointment at Grady, and that day before we had gone, and again, it's a community hospital, mm -hmm. so we couldn't be seen, so I had to go back home. When he came to get me, I literally was so weak, I couldn't get myself off the floor, you know, so thank God mm -hmm. he had a key mm -hmm. to get into the house to be able to take me, but um, once I was admitted, and she said at three months, he just could not. Um, the three months gone, three yeah. months taking care of the house. Exactly. Because exactly. you were his, you were his backbone. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So. But um, you know, you can't. You know, one thing I love about you, you cried. Mm -hmm. We talked on the <laughs> phone. But you didn't blame him. Oh no, no, not at all. Not you at understood. All. Mm -hmm. You understood. Mm -hmm. But it is hard to lose the other half. Yeah. You know, at yeah. a time like that. Right. You exactly. Know, at yeah. a time yeah. like that, it's exactly. really hard to lose that other exactly. half. And you know. He knows that, but mm -hmm. it's it's hard. Yeah. It's hard yeah. to watch a loved one suffer. Some people maintain, but some people can't. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Some people exactly. can't. And for you, Mama, for you, your backbones and and your the love of your community that surrounds you and everything. I heard to talk about the church. I got to mm -hmm. get to the church. Yes. <laughs> um, you, when you had to hustle around Birmingham, Alabama, you know, we was riding with you one day. We had to go. We we went thrift store shopping yes. and everything. Like, gotta do what you gotta do. Mm -hmm. um, and your daughter went through her transplants and it was from a, a baby. Yes. Oh my God. Yeah. In hours? Yes. She was so happy to go use the restroom by herself. She hadn't done that in years. <laughs> um, and then to see her, the water just come off of her. Like about two weeks later, I didn't know who yeah, she was. Exactly. Yeah. She dropped a lot She of dropped an amazing. amazing amount of mm -hmm. weight. Mm -hmm. The light, the color in her skin. <laughs> well, see, you weren't there to witness this. <laughs> you were it telling me before. It just sounded, right. yeah, it, it sounded miracle. miraculous. Yeah. It was a miracle because, and then she, the surgery was so intense. And we was like, I, yeah. I come the next day, oh my God, I'm thinking, right. oh, she's going to be laid up like this. Right. She's no. up, sitting mm -mm. up talking. Mm -hmm. and I'm like, she says, girl, I've been in pain so long. This, yeah, this, this yeah. I can relief. take this. <laughs> this is a relief cause yes. I'm going to say it. I could pee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, to imagine to want to be able to pee. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. it's no big deal when you just, but when you. We take it for granted. Yeah. We yeah. take yeah. it for granted and to pee, normal pee. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, the grace, the spirit in that room when we we were struggling I was trying to get to the hospital you remember yeah. how the hospital was yeah. it is it's the amazing. hardest hospital <laughs> to navigate every time I tried to come we got right, lost right. Um, <laughs> but to see her morph each and every day mm -hmm. uh, the nurses were touched mm -hmm. but mommy well I can tell you this I used to pray you know the old system you had a beeper and you just mm -hmm. pray for that beeper to go off well they got rid of that system and they were just gonna call you we came to Birmingham twice, and at around three or four in the morning, we got told at the last test it's not a match. Mm. I and remember you, get you so telling depressed. me that. So this yeah. time she says, Birmingham has called me again. UAB has called me, but we don't have to go, do we? I say yes. I'll be at the house in about fifteen minutes. Your bags better be packed. You're saying <laughs> every time they call, <laughs> you yeah, go. we're gonna go. So <laughs> I had to stop praying about it so much, and I just said, Lord, I just want you to give her a perfect kidney. Mm. When we this time. Because I complain. Wait till you hear this. I complained <laughs> about the way they do that. I said, do you realize when you tell me at 3 o'clock in the morning it's not a match and you walk out of the room, we're shatters. You yeah. should have a clergy person, chaplain. Mm -hmm. Somebody to talk to you. Psychologist or someone to talk to me. Yeah. So what they did this time, they took us to the surgical suite and we said, well, this must be happening. But they were doing the same thing on the surgical suite, but they would have had someone there to speak with us. Mm -hmm. uh, so when the doctor came in, it was a female doctor whose name I don't remember, mm -hmm. she said, we have the perfect kidney for your daughter. And that's that what, exactly what you had prayed, <laughs> the perfect kidney. perfect kidney. Mm -hmm. So she didn't get one kidney, she got two. Wow. And they were pediatric kidneys. Mm -hmm. So full and of life. Learn is full they of don't life. Remove, full of life. They don't remove your old kidneys, and they don't do the surgery from the back where your kidneys are. They do it from the front. Really? And they put the kidneys on one side and they just connect the tubes. So That's incredible. Her, I never her kidneys are named Tinker, 
<laughs> and Hello Kitty. I love it. <laughs> Those were her daughters. Remember that. Take aunt. her and Hello Kitty. I liked her before, but now I love her. <laughs> So Take she's her. never met the donor family, but she got a chance to write him a letter. Oh, good. And if she would, she could publish that letter. It was so touching. It was mm -hmm. so heartfelt. And they have an uh, annual picnic where the donors get to thank to be there mm -hmm. and whatever. So she has attended that. Uh, 2013 is when she got a transplant, but she never stopped. She did dialysis in center for seven years and at home for five years. Wow. And at home And her children, her children grew yeah, up yeah, watching her, her mother that. like this. Mm -hmm. It was a full clinic in my living room at the old house and the family room at our new house. The Lord blessed us with a six bedroom home so that my daughters who were sick could come and stay mm -hmm. and be amply cared Care for, for not walking mm -hmm. over each other. Mm -hmm. And she did everything, it was a full clinic. She learned to do everything. So what she does now, She's an advocate also. Mm -hmm. She goes out and teach people about home dialysis, a company called Next Stage. It's a portable computer that's about 50 pounds. Mm -hmm. And wow. she could take it with her. She did a lot of traveling. Mm -hmm. She just get on the airplane with her machine. They send her medicine to her at the hotel. And she'd hook up at the hotel and do her dialysis and keep right on going. So they she's go still, to Vegas. even, they go though, to even Chicago. though she's got a transplant, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. she still has to do the dialysis? No. no. Oh, I'll just say I yeah, got lost. I was just want to make sure it's called. Well, yeah. yeah. I know she wasn't supposed to be tattered anymore. <laughs> yeah. Just because we heard the other journey for mm -hmm. things in at a period mm -hmm. of time, three years is when the Medicare ends when you get a transplant. So she was blessed to be able to get a full-time job. Mm -hmm. And this September, her benefits will end. Mm -hmm. But she has a job that has medical benefits, mm -hmm. and she's going to she's going to be fine. Yeah. And her oldest wow. daughter mm -hmm. is in college. Her name is also Tangela <laughs> <laughs> at, at Georgia Southern in Statesboro, Georgia. So. But you know, I just like that that you're a unit yes. in all sense of the word. Not only a unit in mother and father and caregiver, but under the dome of God. Mm -hmm. That you planted your seed and you planted your feet. And the fruit shows. Uh, this girl right here, <laughs> she literally should be preaching. <laughs> Hon, if I didn't want to get y'all a shout, I would let her pray for you. You think she's singing, you might say, come and join my group. But now, at the end of the performance, we're going to let Jamaica pray. You'll just start the music. <laughs> let me say something about Jamaica. I did not know what to pray for. So I just asked God to give a miracle. Because I look at my daughter and I think, she's not going to make it. And I tell myself, no, she's going to be just fine. In the first hospital, a nurse came to me. She broke protocol. And she said, your daughter has high calcium levels. And that usually means cancer. And I knew that was true. My background is that of a social worker. Mm -hmm. And so I knew that, but I didn't tell anybody. I just talked to God about it. Mm -hmm. And then when I came the very first day, she says, mommy, take pictures of me. So that's how she has a journal that shows a mm -hmm. picture of her journey. Yeah. This is before internet and Facebook and all that. Yeah. Right, amazing. right. Amazing. You don't have to share some pictures of her. For a you have your own physical Facebook. Right. Yeah. She, had, she got a chance to see how sick she was because, of course, she didn't know. Mm -hmm. Right. Jamika, I tell her the title of her book that she has not yet written is. <laughs> Okay, I won't tell it. <laughs> but there is a book in her life that I'll Copyright. I her. <laughs> when so, you do write the book, so call right. mommy. Okay. We'll talk. <laughs> God, gave mommy. Me, God gave me that miracle. My prayer now is they've both been healed that they have to stay healed. I got a selfish mm -hmm. prayer because when I get old and sick, they can take care of me. That's <laughs> right. That's right. You've got it coming to you now at this point. <laughs> well, you know, um, this show, I know it's going to touch many people across the board. And now about death, I am dealing with my special needs and dementia. I got to plan for that. So even when the nurse asked me yesterday about how to plan for that, I, you know, it's really hard. Yeah. But, you know, my parents died when she was a baby. Nothing could prepare me for the division among my siblings with her care. Mm. Uh, nothing could prepare me for the journey that I would need to take for her care. And now, after burying my parents, now planning the possibility with her with dementia. She could outlive me, you know, because yeah. I ain't gonna tell you how old I am, but anyway. <laughs> um, Stop it now with your 27 <laughs> years. Thank you, darling. But anyway, the, the, the principle with me is, I wanna be here for her. 
mm -hmm. for her transition. Mm -hmm. And I don't want her living through my transition. And I'm not there to make sure she's cared for. I want to thank you all for joining us today. And thank you for coming from Atlanta to be here in Birmingham with us to shoot today. And I want to thank Harvard Center for allowing us to shoot here. The beautiful Absolutely. Harvard beautiful. Center here, downtown Birmingham, Alabama. We're coming back with our next episode. And it's going to be another great show. Absolutely. See you then. Thank you so much for watching, and I thank you for your support. Subscribe to my channel and give me a thumbs up for more great content. Have a fantastic day.